Hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ravi and I'm the AGM admissions for the postgraduate program in business analytics and business intelligence. Uh, apologies that I'm uh, a little late uh, in, uh, in getting started with this because of some concerns with the audio. We were not able to uh, log on properly, but I hope everyone is able to hear uh, and listen, uh, listen and uh, see uh, the screen. What is there in front of you right now? At any point of time, if you have any concerns or uh, you are not uh, able to see the uh, see the video or the audio, uh, if you have any doubts or questions related to the program, please feel free to write in the chats or the question section, which you can see on the right hand side of your panel. And I'll be more than happy to uh, address to your uh, the, the questions which you have raised. Uh, ideally, typically, what I generally like to do is that Initially, uh, I would go through the certain set of uh, slides which I have prepared for you, which covers uh, a little bit about the industry in terms of how the industry and the salary levels are actually shaping up, uh, especially for the analytics part. And then uh, I would uh, like to deal a little bit about uh, what is the program uh, which we are uh, talking here about. And uh, post that, any questions which you have, I'll be more than happy to answer that. So uh, please feel free to uh, write your questions in the questions uh, panel uh, or the chat section. So to start with the presentation, I just wanted to deal with a couple of facts uh, as to what exactly analytics industry is doing at this point of time in terms of the revenue and what is the kind of growth which we are projecting in the next couple of years, uh, especially till uh, 2025. Uh, if we see the kind of revenue which the analytics uh, industry has generated in the last few years is uh, especially in the last financial year is uh, somewhere around 3 billion US dollars. And that is something if you compare it with, it with the uh, other established industries in the country, especially with the IT or the other uh, other domains, you will find that this is a very, very small number as compared to them. But uh, given the fact that analytics has picked up the pace only in the last couple of years, uh, it is a very, very substantial number. And we are expecting that this number will actually uh, grow seven times or eight times as compared to what it is at this point of time in the next five to seven years time frame. And to be very honest, I'll not be surprised if that number doesn't get surpassed because uh, uh, because the kind of infrastructure which is being provided at this point of time, the kind of interest e uh, which even the central government uh, in, in, in India has at this point of time in the areas related to analytics or artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, these kind of areas, uh, it is giving a major boost to the entire analytics industry. And that is where we are seeing more and more growth opportunities which are coming into the picture. One area where we have seen that uh, a lot of opportunities have been created in the last couple of years is the startup area where we find that uh, many new companies, many new startups have actually come into this uh, come into this domain and they have started offering analytics as a service to different different companies. And uh, we have seen that around 700 odd million dollars of funding has happened in the last two and a half, three years or so. And that itself, again, is giving a boost to the entire uh, system, uh, ecosystem, which the analytics industry has, as well as it is also creating a lot of good uh, and interesting opportunities in this uh, space. Uh, and that is something if you are interested in uh, trying to do something new, something from scratch and uh, maybe something which is very, very interesting and fascinating. Yes, uh, startups are one area which you can definitely go ahead and explore uh, a lot, uh, a lot more. This is what I was actually talking about that the kind of growth which we have seen till now and the kind of growth which we are projecting till uh, 2025. And this is something which was published by Analytics India magazine uh, some time back. And uh, the kind of growth which we are seeing is uh, uh, is more like a hockey stick growth, which we are uh, expecting where uh, by 2025, we are expecting the revenues to almost reach or cross uh, around 20 billion dollars and that is something which is going to be a huge opportunity for professionals who are actually entering into the system at this point of time because uh, you will always get that first mover advantage when you are moving into any company or any industry uh, which is in its growth stage and especially if you are uh, joining any organization or any industry in the initial growth stage part it gives you a lot more 
uh, momentum as compared to when you are joining that industry when it has it would have reached uh, its peak or it would have matured a little bit more so accordingly the growth opportunity in terms of designations in terms of uh, doing something interesting in terms of salaries uh, in terms of handling uh, more responsibilities all those things club together uh, becomes a very very important aspect if you are entering into this industry at this point of time if i talk about analytics uh, how is that uh, how it is actually uh, generating these revenues then we have seen that uh, analytics uh, the services has been uh, is something which has been uh, which have been outsourced to a, a lot many uh, companies and countries uh, outside india and also within india so we are so, uh, we are seeing that analytics as a service is being uh, outsourced instead of uh, what we were seeing earlier in the it industry where uh, it companies were offering uh, software as a service to uh, other countries and uh, different companies uh, across the country now what we are seeing is that analytics is following that path and uh, it will not be a surprise if analytics becomes the next it for india where india is known for outsourcing its analytical services to different countries both outside uh, india as well as companies within the within the country and in the last couple of years we have seen that these services have been outsourced to company uh, countries like us uk australia germany uh, canada france so the revenue has definitely increased year on year as compared to what it was earlier and that is something which is again a driving factor uh, in terms of the growth of the analytics industry uh, and one 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 key factor in fact uh, people who are actually driving this growth are also one uh, big set is the captive analytics industries or companies uh, companies like uh, tcs or cognizant or bigger companies they have actually formed captive analytics centers and they are offering analytics as a service to them uh, for to fulfill their own requirement as well as they are offering analytics as a service to uh, other countries and that is where we are seeing uh, this growth opportunity which is actually getting created uh, in the last couple of years uh, if you talk about the, the analytics by market size then uh, yes financial bfsi industry is something which is uh, still leading the pack and uh, followed by marketing advertising e-commerce retail uh, telecom pharma healthcare travel hospitality uh, these are the kind of industries which have actively started using analytics for uh, for driving their business and they are generating substantial uh, revenues uh, uh, accordingly so if if i talk about for example retail it's a very very big user of analytics if if i'll take a, a small example of um, the retail analytics uh, then uh, in the in the retail segment then uh, i i come across an example of target which is a, a a retail store in us it's a it's a giant retail store in us and they have multiple stores so they have used analytics to identify that uh, there are men who are coming in their stores between a certain age category who are who are buying beer cans from their stores so between 35 to 40 that is i think the age category where they are coming to the stores and they are buying beer cans from uh, their retail stores and uh, along with beer cans they are buying buying one more thing and that extra thing is something which generally we we will not be able to assume something on our own uh, without applying analytics and after applying analytics what the company find, found out that along with beer cans they were actually buying diapers and this is something which has been made possible only by analytics by capturing data by doing a proper analysis after working it on certain tools and techniques and that is what the insight a company was able to generate so in terms of product positioning in terms of uh, what products to club together in terms of at what price to sell what particular product uh, when you are moving out uh, of a retail store uh, and you are uh, getting your bills done there are certain products which are kept there why they are kept there why only those product uh, which are kept there everything has certain analytics behind that and this is something which is being used extensively by sales marketing professionals product positioning guys uh, uh, people who are actually doing data analysis for these organizations that is something which is happening actively even if you talk about e-commerce uh, if you talk about some uh, someone like amazon uh, their entire business model is actually based on how quickly they are actually deliver they are able to how quickly and efficiently they are able to deliver a product to you 
so that is something which which gets done using technology artificial intelligence and analytics optimization techniques how to optimize uh, the entire supply chain process in the best possible manner uh, similarly uh, airlines industries are actually using uh, analytics uh, they are uh, putting various sensors which are fitted in their uh, for example in their uh, in their uh, engines and they are actually predicting when the engine will malfunction when the engine will create a problem and they are actually uh, sharing these insights with the airline companies and they are saving costs for the airline companies and they are charging for these services so there are multiple instances where different industries are actually using analytics for increasing their revenues for increasing their business for offering better services and products so uh, and that is where we are seeing that over a period of time over a period of last two three years the the usage of analytics and the kind of impact which it is having uh, which it is having on uh, various industries uh, the kind of outcome which it is giving to different companies that is something which has been substantial and it is uh, only going to grow uh, from here on so that is one area analytics is one area which you should definitely be actively looking into If I talk about uh, the opportunities which are getting created uh, on the basis of the cities which are there, uh, then we uh, we have come across uh, a scenario where uh, we have come across a situation where we have seen uh, the revenues which are being generated by different cities is something again which is increasing over uh, year on year uh, uh, from the last three four years or so. And uh, Delhi and CR, Bangalore, Mumbai, Chennai, Pune, Hyderabad, all these cities are actually the, the tier one cities which we have are actually generating large uh, market shares uh, in the analytics area. And uh, one uh, big uh, one big surprise, in fact, uh, I would not say exactly a surprise, but one uh, good insight is that Kolkata is uh, something where we are seeing a lot more opportunities which are getting generated over the over the last three four years more and more it companies and more and more companies are actually generating uh, revenues using analytics uh, uh, in in kolkata area and that is on the rise and that is in fact one very big reason that why we are uh, having uh, this year we will be launching uh, a batch in kolkata uh, very soon and purely because of the kind of uh, the interest which candidates have and the kind of interest which the companies there have in the analytics area uh, we are uh, we are seeing this increase in the opportunity within the Kolkata uh, region. Now, what has been the reason that suddenly we have seen that analytics has come out of nowhere and everyone is talking about analytics and artificial intelligence and areas related to that? One big reason is that uh, today everyone has access to smartphones, everyone has access to internet. Uh, people have uh, smart devices, smart TVs, laptops, uh, watches, and 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 other activities, and also uh, availability of internet to a very big set of people, which was not there earlier. This has been one very very big reason that analytics has become a very important and driving factor in terms of the uh, the businesses. If we talk about different companies. And that is where we are seeing uh, organizations like Facebook, Tesla, Microsoft, Uber, Amazon, Google. That is where they are actually uh, deriving value from. They are offering services on the basis of the data which has been generated uh, by the by these companies. If you talk about someone someone like Google, uh, that is one company which knows a lot about you, which even uh, maybe a very uh, a person which is very close to you might not be aware about things like where do you uh, get your dinner from or which school your kids go to uh, where is your office which route do you follow every day for your office where have you parked your car uh, where do you shop online from uh, where do you buy gifts from where, where do you actually uh, go for your recreational uh, activities for malls gyms all those kind of things that is something which google is aware about now imagine a company or a organization or a person who knows so much about you, how much of an impact that organization can actually have on you, how much of an impact it can have in terms of your buying pattern, in terms of your spending behavior. Everything is something which is being driven on the basis of the data points generated. Every minute we, which we are actually using internet or working on Facebook or Google, we are generating certain data points and every data point gets uh, 
and distributed to different service providers on the basis of their requirement and the services and the products which they are offering and that is where we are seeing companies which are dealing in data and numbers and analytics have become uh, kind of the next big thing in the in the world today not only in india and that is where we are seeing more and more opportunities and uh, experimentations being actually taken care of or being held and that's why more and more governments are actually interested in these uh, organizations so earlier we used to just talk about okay uh, uh, other resources like oil and gas natural gas and other kind of resources we used to be dealing with all of those things but uh, data today has become one of the biggest resource in terms of driving the business or or any economy and that's where we are seeing a huge impact uh, because of that and uh, if i talk about uh, the drivers i said that there is an increase in the data generation but also in terms of the affordability of the tools the tools which are being used to actually manage uh, which which are being used to actually process the data that is something which has become affordable tools like r and python and all those kind of tools uh, which are freely available for uh, any data analyst to actually work on as well as uh, the government has also become more and more open and transparent in terms of providing the data the regulatory and the risk compliances are uh, and uh, are having like a greater transparency and as a result, what has happened is that the top performing enterprises have shown a five times higher usage of analytics as compared to the low performers. And that itself is a huge, huge number. Five times is a huge number. And that is in a situation where uh, the companies have not actively started using data analytics. Most of the companies are still in that transition phase where they are still exploring what data can do for you. And that is where we are seeing more and more professionals from across the industries are actually uh, looking forward to equip themselves with this kind of a uh, knowledge and skill set so that they can uh, go forward and uh, be more relevant to the changing requirements of the economy uh, or the industries. And one thing which we have seen is that as and when an industry grows and it, it creates opportunity for people and professionals uh, similar at the same time it also uh, creates opportunity in terms of the salary levels and uh, that's why in the last couple of years we have seen especially the last financial year we have seen that the average salary in the analytics industry has been somewhere around 12.7 lakhs around 13 lakh rupees and that is again uh, an increase over uh, around 10 10.5 lakh rupees what it was the year before that so there is a substantial jump in terms of the average salary first of all in the last uh, two years or so and the professionals who were earlier uh, who were earning between uh, 15 lakh rupees uh, or more than 15 lakh rupees was somewhere around 17 percent that percentage of professionals has actually increased to 22 or 23 percent in 2018 in the last two years and that is also because of the fact that there are very less number of analytics uh, professionals in the country or very less number of people who are actually technically skilled in terms of both business as well as the analytics part and that's where we are seeing uh, more and more uh, a growth opportunity within the salary uh, for these professionals uh, Mumbai continues to be uh, one of the highest paying cities in uh, in the country for uh, data analytics around 13.3 lakhs of the average salary has been given and the median salary uh, we have seen has increased by 23 percent this year. Uh, telecom is uh, in fact right now the highest paying uh, uh, pay master right now in terms of the average salary at 18.6 lakhs. Uh, so that is an overview in terms of the salaries which are getting generated uh, if you talk about our program also we are seeing professionals who are actually graduating from the program uh, they on an average they are seeing a hike of around 47 to 48 49 percent hike which they are getting and these are the professionals who do not have any prior experience in the analytics or any kind of a programming or a technical domain these are the professionals who have some experience in their own domain and they have learned analytics they have added that skill set and they have used both the domain experience and analytics and they have gone out and transitioned into analytics and that's where we are seeing more and more opportunities getting created now if i talk about uh, the salaries uh, and people who are joining our program uh, then the question is that what does uh, this program actually uh, contains what it has for you and that's what I want to cover in the next 10 minutes and then I'll open up the floor for a question. So the postgraduate program in business analytics and business intelligence, uh, what we have is a 12 months program for working professionals. 
uh, which we have here. In fact, uh, exclusively it has been designed for working professionals so that you can work uh, while, I mean, so that you can earn while you are still uh, uh, studying and uh, upskilling yourself. Uh, over the period of time, what we have also realized as an institute is that uh, very soon there will be a time when one single post graduation, which a traditional post graduation, which we do in the classroom setup when we are kids, uh, when we are students, that will something be not sufficient for us to move forward. And that is where uh, that is where a program like PGPBA actually helps you in upskilling yourself. Uh, there are professionals uh, maybe after five years you would want to upskill yourself in some other area and you cannot go back to the classroom to upskill yourself and that is where the program actually offers value to people or professionals who are working at this point of time and we are seeing uh, accordingly the batch profile of the if you see the batch profile what we have across every batch the average experience is somewhere around eight to nine years or so so the program offers a very very uh, good outcome in terms of the learning outcomes uh, for the working professional and that's what for uh, for you it has been designed uh, specifically for that uh, professionals who are looking for business roles in analytics that is uh, this program is something which uh, offers a very unique concept which is a, a combination of both business as well as analytics so uh, it's not that uh, you will just become technically skilled and you will not know how to apply those technical skill set on the business front it is a combination of both and if you are already in a technical job you don't want to go ahead and move and do something again technical uh, today business has become uh, a, a, it has moved into a different role altogether where companies are looking for professionals who have domain expertise also as well as who have uh, expertise in the analytics area because that gets valued a lot more than just having expertise in one single niche area. The other part is that the program, because it is for working professionals, we have made it uh, fairly flexible. What are those flexibilities which we are providing during the program for working professionals? That is something which I'll cover in the later slide. Uh, and the other part which uh, we uh, at Great Lakes are very, very proud about at Great Learning, we are very, very proud about as a fact is that we have been now ranked number one uh, business analytics program in the country by Analytics India magazine for the last four consecutive years. And that is precisely for uh, two reasons. Uh, in fact, three reasons, I would say. Uh, one is the kind of faculty which teaches in the program. Second is the kind of curriculum which we have. And third is the kind of professionals which we get in the program because these professionals these very same professionals actually go out in the industry and they are the flag bearers for uh, for this particular program and they are doing uh, tremendously well at this point of time and that is as a result that is one of the factors why uh, great lakes uh, this pgpba program is still number one in the country from the last four years and uh, if i talk about the faculty and the curriculum that is something which i'll definitely be sharing in detail in the next couple of slides which will give you a much better understanding of how the program is uh, um, conducted uh, the other part which makes the program unique is that it is a very much industry oriented program around 60 percent of the program is covered by the industry professionals and these professionals are very very senior professionals directors ceos business heads uh, vice presidents uh, these kind of uh, professionals who are actually working in different companies they are coming and teaching you in the program so you will be learning from people who are working uh, or doing this day in and day out in their organization and the second part is that uh, it's a pure hands-on program so it's not that you will learn something in a theoretical manner and you don't know how to implement that uh, along with whatever you are learning you will be uh, given assignments, case studies, project work, uh, various assessments in the classroom session. Also, you will be working hands on on various tools and techniques. When you go back, you will be working on certain data sets. All these things will also be part of your evaluation process, as well as it will give you a hands on experience on the program and the tools and techniques which we are learning. Now, one thing which makes the program unique is the curriculum of the program. So what we have done is that uh, it is a mixture of both business as well as the analytics part. So, for example, when you start the program, and in fact, let me move to the next slide. Uh, if, when you start the program, you deal with certain uh, business foundation subjects such as finance, marketing, CRM. Uh, you will be dealing with statistical methods for decision making. And uh, intro to analytics is something which will help you in uh, getting started with the, the, uh, the basics. So we do uh, start from scratch and also we cover various business 
uh, foundation courses because and these business foundation courses are actually taught keeping in uh, mind analytics uh, and it is not purely just business it is a mixture of both business and the analytics part so you learn how analytics actually uh, works in these domains and then we move into the second half wherein we are dealing with uh, data mining predictive modeling time series machine learning uh, optimization techniques and within these main topics there are subtopics which will uh, cover the entire uh, a framework of how analytics uh, of various tools analytical tools and technologies so uh, if you want the detailed uh, curriculum you can definitely visit our website you will be getting a detailed curriculum or reach out to the admissions team but this is how we start and we start from scratch so that everyone comes to the same level because not every professional will be having the similar kind of a, uh, a background in terms of the uh, understanding about the statistics and the analytics part nor in terms of the work experience part so this is going to be the first half and slowly moving into the second half of the program, which I feel is a fairly interesting part wherein you will be uh, given a domain exposure. So you'll be working on uh, marketing and retail analytics, web and social media analytics, uh, finance and risk and analytics, supply chain and logistics analytics. Uh, these are the kind of subjects wherein whatever you have learned in the first half, both the business as well as the analytics concepts will be applied in these domains and you will be working in a very much hands on matter on the various tools and technologies like R, Tableau, Python. Uh, so all these tools will be used in, in the program, in the classroom session, which you'll be working on and uh, you'll be gaining exposure. And these are the modules where a lot of industry interaction helps in wherein you're just not learning but also you're networking with the industry professionals and very very senior industry professionals who uh, wherein you can explore various opportunities with them also the other part is the visualization the data visualization part wherein you are using tableau for data visualizing and uh, apart from R, Tableau and Python, uh, we also provide you an online module for the SAS. Uh, so uh, if anyone is interested in going for an online module for the SAS, they can go ahead and do that also. And there are uh, multiple hackathons which are done uh, throughout the year. Uh, some hackathons are actually done in collaboration with the uh, with various corporates and some hackathons are done uh, by Great Lakes. So depending upon uh, the requirements, that is something which is done. It also gives a platform for professionals to actually highlight themselves as to what they have learned in the program and uh, especially uh, highlight themselves in front of a corporate and that gives them, gives them a lot of leverage. So that we have added as a part of the program and it is being actively used by many candidates to practice what they have learned as well as showcase uh, uh, their skill sets. Apart from this, uh, one major integral part of the program is the capstone project. So what happens in a capstone project is that in the last three, four months of the program, in fact, four months of the program, uh, you will be going through a, a, a detailed, complete uh, hands-on capstone project, which is a, a for, for a four months or a five months duration, around four months duration, I would say. And in this, capstone project you have to pick up a topic in a, a domain of your choice it can be healthcare it can be telecom retail um, automobile finance consulting uh, it can be it can be any domain which you are interested in picking up the project from and in fact in many cases we have seen that the candidates have picked up project what they are actually doing in their company or uh, they have uh, taken up a project from their own organization uh, so that they can uh, go ahead and even showcase their company that that what they are doing in that uh, in the analytics field so this is something which we have seen where you will apply all the learnings which you have had in the initial six seven months of the programs and you will be applying that in this particular capstone project now this becomes very very important because uh, if you see the batch profile what we have uh, in the program then around 60% uh, of the candidate actually come from non analytics background non analytics and non it background if i talk about only non analytics background then around 95% or 94% of the candidate come from non analytics background and uh, most of them uh, and if they are not coming from non analytics background they have not done anything relevant in the analytics domain so one thing which actually helps you in showcasing what you can do in analytics is this particular capstone project. And that's what even the companies are interested for when you are moving into a, uh, a, a different company or a different domain altogether post doing this program. Because when we have seen that candidates have actually taken the hard copies of the capstone project, they have presented it in the interview process and they have 
uh, actually they have been able to uh, use this capstone project as a stepping stone in terms of moving towards a particular uh, domain or an industry or a company which they were interested in so uh, anyone who is looking forward to join this program uh, definitely should uh, pay a lot of focus in uh, on the on the capstone project because that is going to be a very very important aspect of the program and as you can see on your screen our candidates have done uh, the capstone project across different domains retail banking web social media finance supply chain insurance healthcare so one thing which is very uh, unique and good about analytics is that the tools and technologies which you use in analytics remain constant with different industries so it doesn't change with the different different industries all what changes is your expertise and your knowledge in that particular domain so for example if you are working in bfsi uh, or if you are working in for example in an e-commerce company and you learn analytics so the domain experience what you have is something which gives you a lot more weightage uh, when you are moving uh, or changing your job or moving up higher the order in the company and when it especially when it is clubbed with the analytics what you would have learned in the program so uh, so regardless of the domain what you're working in analytics will be applied in the same manner the same tools and techniques will be used now the other aspect which makes the program unique and interesting is uh in fact are the faculty members and the industry mentors which we have in fact uh the top uh, in fact, uh, three of the uh, top 20 analytics academicians in the country are part of our faculty pool. They are the full time faculty of the Great Lakes and they are teaching in, in the program. Uh, so someone like Dr. Bappaditya Mukhopadhyay, Dr. P.K. Vishwanathan, Dr. R.L. Shankar. Uh, these three have been uh, named among top 20 analytics academicians in the country. And uh, they are the ones who are not only teaching in India, they are also going outside India. They are teaching in different universities and uh, management education institutes. So what they are doing is that they are not just giving you exposure to the uh, domestic that is the Indian uh, context but they're also giving exposure to the international context so what you're learning is something which is both relevant in India as well as outside and similarly the other faculties which we have whether it is <coughs> sorry whether it is Dr. Basu, Dr. Uh, Sridhar or uh, Professor Ishwar or uh, other faculties who are teaching in the program uh, they are actually giving you the best of exposure in terms of how the uh, how the uh, the learning happens in fact if i just take an example of dr pk vishwanathan so what we do as a practice is that uh, we take feedback from every candidate after every module is over and that fat feedback is on the kind of curriculum what we have taught that feedback is how we have taught uh, the feedback is on the infrastructure the feedback is on the uh, the learning outcomes, the feedback is on the faculty, whether the faculty was good or not. And uh, Dr. P.K. Vishwanathan consistently, he has been one professor, one faculty in the program uh, who gets five out of five rating from a batch of around 50, 60 students. Now imagine a, a batch of 60 students giving five out of five rating to a faculty means not a single person has given 4.9 rating to that faculty. And it has not happened once or twice, right? It, it is a consistent phenomena which happens uh, throughout the year across different batches. And that is the kind of quality faculty which you get into the program. And that's, for example, and then that's just not uh, Dr. P.K. Vishwanathan and uh, professors like Dr. Uh, Bappaditya, Dr. Basu, Dr. Uh, R.L. Shankar, they have, they are the ones who have been getting those kind of ratings and it helps us in improving the way we teach the candidate. It helps us uh, in improving and giving feedback to the faculty and uh, they sportingly actually take those feedbacks and try and improve if there is an improvement area. But someone like Dr. Vishwanathan or Dr. Bappaditya, uh, the other ones who have been getting five out of five rating uh, from a batch of 50 60 students and that is something which is a phenomenal uh, achievement to have similarly we have faculties who are coming from the industry uh, as i said initially they are the avps vice president directors business heads uh, they are coming from companies like cognizant evalue serve bank of america uh, american express genpack from different different organizations which are dealing in analytics and uh, they come and teach you uh, and give you a very very relevant experience of what's happening in the industry now, uh, what are the reasons why you can, why you should, in fact, go for the PGPBA program? Uh, I would say one is that 
it has been uh, it has been ranked number one program from the last four years. Uh, my apologies that I have not included this current year. In fact, if you see last month, our PGP BABI program has been ranked number one again by Analytics India magazine, and that is something again which is a phenomenal achievement for us as well as we are very very proud of that fact. Uh, the other part is that uh, you get an advantage of being part of the Great Lakes community. You are doing this program from Great Lakes Institute of Management, which has been ranked among top 10 management institutes in the country. You take most of the rankings across India, whether it is from Outlook, from Business India, from uh, Business Today, from uh, India Today, uh, or from Career360. Every ranking you will see that Great Lakes has been ranked among top 10 management institutes in the country. And even the ranking which is published by uh, Ministry of Human Resource and Development there, uh, the Great Lakes is ranked number six amongst the private institution. The top 10 are all the government institution and amongst the private institution, we are ranked number six. So uh, that again, it's uh, itself speaks a lot about the kind of uh, faculty and the kind of uh, pedagogy and the curriculum which we follow because and, and the kind of outcome which our candidates get because these are the parameters on which you get ranked in the in these publications and these are highly uh, acclaimed publications which are there. The other part is that you also become an alumni of Great Lakes. So uh, not only you get uh, the access to the job opportunities, but uh, also in terms of any events, workshops, seminars, other things which are happening in Great Lakes, it is thrown open to all the uh, PGP, BABI alumni. And that is something which uh, helps you exploring more opportunities, networking with more people, learning new things. So that is something which is an added value, which, which gets taken care in the program. The other part of the program is the flexibility. Now, flexibility has multiple aspects. One is the learning management system. So uh, learning management system is uh, what we call as Olympus is something which is given to you. Uh, the access is given to you and you have a 24 seven access throughout the 12 months of the program. In fact, even after the completion of the program for the ne next two years, you get access to the learning management system so that uh, you can access any study material which you want. So all your study material, learning material is uploaded on the learning management system and even the classrooms which are actually happening live in the classroom session are actually recorded and uploaded on the learning management system. So what happens is uh, in case we understand that and this is where flexibility comes into picture. We understand that you are a working professional and you might not be able to attend the classroom sessions always. Sometimes you might miss because of a certain uh, professional or personal commitment in that case the classroom sessions which are happening are recorded and they are uploaded on the learning management system so that at any point of time you can go back and check what the faculty has taught today and you can revise those concepts whenever you are there in the classroom session next time you can clarify those doubts and queries so that's something which helps you in not missing these aspects the other part is that uh, you also get a uh, a program office support so throughout the 12 months of the program you will be having a dedicated program manager who will be guiding you who will be helping out uh, uh, to you in terms of any concerns or queries if you are stuck at any point of time on certain modules if you're not able to understand something you are at home you can talk to the program manager he or she will be able to connect you to the subject matter expert or a guide or a mentor who will help you in clarifying your doubts and queries so that is something which program office does and what we have seen is that over a period of time uh, many uh, many institutes who do not provide program office support properly uh, there the candidate tend to drop out from the program because uh, once you do not understand something and you move to the next topic it becomes very difficult to go back and catch on those things so that is why we have made sure that the program office actually uh, dedicates a lot of time in monitoring individual performance of each and every person and wherever someone is lacking the program office actually reaches out to those professionals and they understand that where and how the help can be provided for you to move forward in terms of how to learn uh, in a much better manner how to complete the assignments and aspects related to that the other part as i said capstone project is something which is again very very important and that has been one of the interesting and important factors of the features of the program uh, 
other than that in terms of flexibility what we also do is uh, in case if you are getting transferred from one location to another so we offer that option that if we are offering this program in the other location then we will be more than happy to transfer your candidature from one location to the another so we are offering this program across six locations right now so at any point of time if you are getting transferred you can move to the another uh, location and in case if you are going out of india and uh, you want to take a break from the program or even within india you want to take a break from a program because of certain other commitments which you are not able to uh, because of which you are not able to concentrate on the studies we will give you a break and that break can be of 10 days th three months five months one year two year we have seen candidates coming back even after two years after coming from an on-site visit from outside india and they uh, they have joined the program back again with us and completed the program so because this generally happens when people are not sure when they will go out of india or when they will take a break so what the best way is that not to waste your current time you go ahead and join the program and whenever there is a break you want to take you can take and you can start from the same place where you left uh, in a new batch or you can start fresh again in the new batch so that's something which is an, as an option is provided to all the candidates the other part uh, which we have is the e-portfolio. So what this e-portfolio does is that uh, it is a it it gets auto-generated throughout the uh, it gets auto-generated throughout the uh, uh, duration of the program, wherein uh, all the projects what you are doing is something which is actually uh, which which gets populated here in the e-portfolio all the projects all the synopsis of those projects the tools the techniques skills what you have used there in the project gets uh, populated in this particular uh, uh, e-portfolio and this is a shareable e-portfolio so you can share it on uh, social media platforms like linkedin or uh, facebook or uh, twitter or other platforms because we have seen that uh, many many opportunities now are getting created on the basis of uh, what you have done and how well you can highlight on the social media platforms there are many companies which are hiring on uh, on websites various websites uh, like uh, hacker earth or kegel where they are putting up projects and they are uh, getting job opportunities or interview opportunities on the basis of that so that is something which we have done uh, because we have uh, learned that this is, this is one way where you can highlight your uh, the opportunities which which are getting generated in the program the other part is that uh, the pgpba alumni uh, what we have here uh, is something uh, which is again a phenomenal pool of uh, candidates people coming from different different organizations uh, who are working there uh, and this is something which you can anyway access on our website also <clears throat> but they are the ones who are actually there in the industry and because of them we are actually number one today now i'm sure a lot of you will be interested in knowing uh, more about the career enhancement part uh, that uh, what do we do so we do provide uh, career uh, support services wherein uh, we have a dedicated career support team which reaches out to different organizations uh, uh, in order to get the job opportunities from them and those job opportunities are actually uh, shared with the uh, batch and if you are interested in applying to any of those opportunities you can go ahead and do that and we will be taking the process further ahead from there what we have seen is that uh, the salaries which have been offered uh, to our candidates uh, in the job description has been between rupees 5 lakh to 50 lakh rupees depending upon the work experience level and uh, the average hike what our candidates have been able to get post completing this program is somewhere around 47 to 49 percent uh, and if you if we talk about the kind of companies which are actually uh, the number of opportunities which are getting created every month is somewhere around 35 to 40 transitions which are actually happening and this is from both the existing set as well as the students who have just passed out from the program so again that is something which is actually uh, uh, telling a lot about the kind of quality of the candidates which we have the kind of uh, the, the learning which they are getting from the program and the other important uh, opportunity which gets created is through the networking we have seen that many industry professionals actually are coming and networking with individually with uh, people who are uh, studying along with them if you talk about the batch profile what we have uh, when you are sitting in a batch where the average experience is around nine years or so or eight nine years and the maximum experience goes as high as 15 20 25 years or so 
then there are many professionals who are studying along with you who are working in different organizations who can take uh, decisions related to uh, hiring or they can influence decision decision related to hiring and we have seen that in many batches uh, the batchmates themselves hiring their own batchmate and those uh, opportunities do get created if you are performing well uh, we have seen many people actually starting their own business after doing this program uh, in fact a couple of days back uh, there was uh, one professional who passed out from our first batch of chennai location uh, he came to our center and i remember that uh, uh, having a discussion uh, with him and uh, he uh, along with two of his batchmates started a business in the uh, marketing uh, analytics area uh, when it was in 2014 uh, when he passed out and uh, since then he has been running that very very successfully and in fact after looking at him uh, two of his another batchmate actually started something on their own and they have uh, started a business on their own or a startup on their own uh, there is a lady who actually uh, joined us uh, she joined us after taking a break from her career uh, for around a year and a half or so and then she joined us again and after she went back in the industry she she started her own business so that is something uh, she is actually outsourcing con uh, analytics as a service as a consulting service to different companies right now uh, as a part of her uh, new startup so that is something which she is doing so there are many people who are working on capstone project and they are using that capstone project to uh, do something on their own so those opportunities if pro professionals are actually interesting uh, interested in looking at those opportunities you can definitely pick up a topic or a project accordingly and you can go ahead and explore those opportunities also uh, otherwise uh, we do provide opportunities as i said companies like mckinsey uh, american express amazon accenture uh, genpact ford zomato fractal analytics uh, deloitte all these kind of organizations have shared job opportunities with us in past and we keep sharing with those uh, those opportunities with our candidates this is what i was talking about in terms of the uh, batch profile what we have you can take a moment to look at the batch profile so this batch profile is something uh, which speaks a lot uh, about itself in terms of uh, the kind of uh, the kind of professionals who are coming and teaching us uh, learning in the program uh, as you can see majority of the batch is actually from non analytics background so you don't need to be from analytics uh, background to actually go ahead and uh, learn the program uh, you need to have a knack for uh, dealing with data if you're comfortable dealing with data and numbers you should be able to do this program you don't need to have a prior experience in the programming or a coding language uh, because that is something which we teach from very basics and that's a very very easy language to understand uh, so it's not something wherein you will have to spend like months and months to actually learn one single programming language so it's a fairly easy language to understand and as you can see people are coming from diverse industries and diverse educational backgrounds so uh, Analytics is something which is equally important to all the industries and people coming from all the uh, or most of the backgrounds. Similarly, as I said, work experience distribution is somewhere the average experience is somewhere around eight to nine years across every batch and highest goes till 15, 20 in case certain cases, 25 years also. Now, uh, one thing which we have is uh, there are two delivery formats which are available. Uh, one is the classroom mode and the other one is the online mode. So there is no difference in the program. Uh, it's exactly the same program. Uh, it's just that one is in the classroom mode and one is in the online mode uh, for uh, almost the same duration. There is a difference of one month. Now, uh, for professionals who are looking for online mode, uh, what I can tell you is that this is something which is fairly unique in nature. Uh, it's not a typical online program wherein uh, you will be uh, learning on a weekend. You will be coming and attending a webinar session uh, in a group of 60 students. No, that is something which is not going to happen here. So online program, actually how it works is uh, you will be having mentored learning sessions in micro classes. So what we have done is that instead of teaching you in the online mode uh, in a webinar session for 60 students. Uh, so what typically used to happen 
if you are learning in a batch of 60 in online mode there will be one faculty who will be teaching you and when he is teaching you let, there are like 15 20 students who will be asking different questions by writing your questions uh, but the faculty will not be able to answer all those questions or he will not be able to clarify all your doubts and queries so in order to uh, in order to uh, change that in or and in fact that also led to a lot of dropouts on the program because if you have not understood anything and uh, the faculty will move from one lecture to a day to the another so if you have not understood anything it will be very difficult for you to complete the program so it had led to a lot of dropout from the program and typically in the in the country we we see that uh, a typical online program used to or uh, currently has around 24 to 40 percent completion rate so only 24 to 44 percent candidates actually complete the program whereas if you talk about the great lakes program the online program specifically then around 95 to 97 percent of the candidates actually complete the program because of the kind of format which we have so what we have done in the format is we have broken down the entire class of 60 70 students into a batch of around 8 to 9 students or 8 to 10 students and every 8 to 10 students is allotted a mentor or a faculty this mentor will be teaching you throughout the 12 months of the program and there will be one mentor which will be allotted to all the 10 people and uh, you will be learning in a micro format so you're not learning in a batch of 60 that is one thing you're learning in a batch of 10 and you will be taught by uh, one faculty for different subjects yes of course there will be different faculties who will be coming but one faculty to 10 students is going to be the ratio and you are not going to type and write your questions or you're not going to uh, just listen to what the faculty is asking and it is not going to be the webinar mode and for example the webinar mode is what i am doing right now where you are writing your questions and i'm explaining in a verbal mode whereas in our online program uh, it will be a video interactive uh, session wherein you can see the faculty the faculty can see you you can verbally ask the question you can raise hands you can clarify your doubts and the faculty can verbally answer to your questions so that is a one-to-one -one, uh, interaction session which you actually have with the faculty which makes the session all the more interesting and all the other features apart from this online mode everything else which is there in the classroom program remains there in the online program also so anyone who is interested and cannot spend in the classroom uh, time in the classroom if you're going out of india if you are uh, if you don't want to come to the classroom session yes online program is something which you can definitely explore uh, again uh, taught by the same faculties uh, we got videos and everything are from the same faculty uh, there are industry faculties who are coming from the, uh, the same industry faculties are actually teaching you here also and the classroom mode is something which is uh, available for you uh, again uh, if you want to physically come to the classroom wherein a different kind of a learning experience is there uh, yes uh, the classroom program is something which will be uh, uh, on offer for you now if i talk about the eligibility criteria i'm sure most of you will be aware about that uh, the program fees is around 3.95 lakhs plus gst for the classroom program and 1.7 lakh plus gst for the online program so and there are installment options available there is a uh, different loan options which are available so you can definitely go ahead and explore for that and talk to the admissions team uh, in order to go ahead you'll have to apply online in fact uh, today uh, is uh, the admissions deadline uh, applications deadline for the upcoming batch uh, and uh, we are going to so what you'll have to do is that you'll have to apply online and uh, once you do that after that you'll have to go through a shortlisting and the screening process once the screening process is done uh, you will be uh, further uh, your application will be further evaluated and a final admission offer will be given to you now uh, these are the batch start dates for the upcoming batches uh, in december month we are going to launch for mumbai and pune in the month of january chennai bangalore delhi and kolkata will be launched uh, my apologies that i have not included hyderabad here hyderabad will be launching in the month of january and the online program is going to launch on 24th uh, that is two days from now so uh, if anyone is still interested in going ahead with the program uh, in the online part you can definitely go ahead and apply today and get your application process for the upcoming batch also so that was it from my end in case if you want to reach out to anyone in the admissions team uh, please feel free to do that uh, the number is mentioned on your screen as well as if you want to write to me please uh, do that again i'll be more than happy to answer your questions now I can see that uh, a lot of you have asked questions to me uh, uh, 
uh, in the chat section. I'll I'll take those questions one on one. Uh, now, Smita has asked that how this program will help out a finance uh, or a accounts graduate uh, person who's uh, as it's related to data work. Okay, so uh, Smita has asked that how it will be related to a person with finance or accounts background. Uh, Smita, if you would have uh, if you were there in my uh, presentation initially, I'm going back to that slide. Uh, I'll give you some industry insight also in terms of what's happening on the financing uh, finance side, right? Uh, just give me a second. Yeah, so here it is. So if you see BFSI industry has been one of the biggest user of analytics uh, in terms of uh, using analytics for uh, fraud detection, for analyzing risk in terms of if you're an accounts professional in terms of uh, analyzing the impact of various policy changes in terms of uh, uh, budgeting in terms of uh, allocating funds for various various uses usage in terms of investing the funds in aspects related to that and that is something which is being actively used by the analytics professionals uh, within the uh, finance domain uh, and i'll be very honest with you uh, even great lakes as an institute uh, account uh, as an accounts team uh, we have a data analyst actually who has an experience who is a qualified ca and is a uh, analytics uh, uh, he has upskilled him, himself in the analytics domain and he is working with us and he is trying to uh, help the uh, finance team in uh, run in a, a proper manner uh, as compared to what it was before and uh, a data analyst was available to them so in terms of the opportunities which are there uh, definitely every organization if you talk about american express uh, one of the biggest department which they have is the fraud and risk analytics department uh, we have seen uh, there is a surge in terms of number of professionals who are coming from the banking industry we are seeing that more and more professionals are actually uh, uh, who want to move away from for example from branch banking they want to move into the uh, uh, they want to go to the corporate banking side or they want to move to the headquarters they are learning analytics they are moving into that particular team where they are able to add uh, value in a different manner so uh, analytics is being is something which is being actively used uh, by the uh, finance professionals uh, nowadays Uh, Akash has asked that what is the salary a BTEC graduate uh, should expect? Well, Akash, to be very honest, uh, it will be unfair for me to actually answer a question like this uh, uh, without knowing more about your profile. And uh, to be very honest, uh, ultimately, the kind of job role which you get and the kind of salary which you get at the end of the program, it completely depends upon how well you are performing. Uh, they During the interview, you are definitely uh, quizzed on multiple things one of the important things is that how technically sound and skilled you are in terms of your understanding and knowledge about analytics both theoretical as well as practical so that is something which will be going to be an important factor but yes as i said candidates who have passed out from our program they have been able to uh, get a salary hike uh, of on an average around 47 to 49 percent so that is something which is a fair indication and plus the industry trends is something which i have already shared in the initial part of the presentation Uh, Akash has asked what are the roles in the analytics startup so Akash uh, in analytics startups uh, basically the roles are again similar to what uh, you will get in a, a, a well established com company uh, it's not that you will be coming up with a different name for the role you might be called as a business analyst or a data analyst or a data scientist but the work which you are doing might be fairly different from what a, a, a established company might be doing and it depends upon startup to startup depending upon what kind of a company you are going into People who want to shift in analytics career after that period. So uh, Avinash has asked a question that analytics is not new. People who want to shift in analytics career after a decade of experience are left. Are they left too behind to catch up? Uh, well, Avinash, I'll give you a, a very uh, uh, small example. In fact, 
uh, there is a candidate uh, and fact an alumni in our program mr vilas vakale and uh, you if you talk about a decade then he had a experience of 17 years just purely in the analytics domain uh, sorry uh, purely in the it domain and uh, after completing the program today he is working in the analytics domain he is currently working for one of the government of india projects in the delhi uh, region so to say that it's uh, too late uh, to actually change no it's not too late it's about how well you have applied yourself and secondly uh, what is the kind of opportunity you are exploring what are the areas which you are exploring as i said the average experience of the batch which we get is somewhere around nine years or so and there is around 34 to 35 percent of the batch which comes from uh, up 10 plus years of category so all these kind of professional and and around 70 percent of the candidates in our program have been able to transition into analytics so uh, there are cases there are instances where candidates who have spent their entire work experience in one single domain they have been able to transition into the analytics part yes as you said analytics is not new but what has happened is that because the data now which is getting generated is something which is in much 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 enormous numbers or huge numbers as compared to what it was earlier then the requirement for analytics professionals has also increased now if i'm working in the finance domain i know i have a domain of uh, i have an experience of 10 years for example a company which is for example a consulting company i would take uh, will be very happy to look at my profile and say okay I, if i want to put uh, someone in front of a client uh, and especially a bfsi client i will ask uh, avinash to actually go ahead and um, uh, deal with that person because this person has a very rich domain experience as well as this person knows how to deal in the analytics analytical tools and techniques how to provide solution to the clients on the basis of analytics plus by clubbing it with domain experience so that is something which is a very very important aspect uh, Avinash has also asked that if I miss weekend uh, classroom, access the classroom session online for that month. I'll get the query resolved to online. Uh, so Avinash, uh, you can get the query resolved in the classroom session whenever you are there in the next time if you have missed anything. Or you can reach out to the program office. They will connect you to a mentor or a face-to-face um, -face session. <coughs> Sorry. Or a video call or a, a telecom. Uh, telecon so all those options are made available to the candidate uh, smita you have asked that please elaborate tableau and python so i mean uh, i don't know how to do that to be very honest but you will be learning end to end uh, both in tableau and python and r as well uh, how to work on these tools you'll be learning end to end tableau is a data visualization tool basically Uh, Suraj has asked how many batches you offer for a year. Suraj, uh, typically around uh, three batches are there in a year uh, at equal interval. Uh, so Avinash has asked if all the features are same in online and offline mode, what is the actual benefit of the offline uh, classroom mode? Uh, see, uh, Avinash, if you are looking for a classroom program where you want the presence of the faculty who is actually uh, standing in front of you and teaching you and solving your doubts and queries wherein you get the privilege of even talking to the faculty and clarifying your doubts and queries after the classroom session is over and uh, sit with him and understand you get an opportunity to network and uh, do group discussions and other activities along with your batchmates in the classroom session so all those things uh, unfortunately uh, cannot be done in the online mode because after in the online mode after the session is over the faculty will not be available to discuss with you immediately after the classroom session because uh, he is not physically available in front of you right online mode is for people or for professionals who don't want to attend the classroom session uh, the learning outcome yes it will be the same that is something which is there but in the online mode it is a flipped classroom session so for example by flipped classroom session what i mean is that there are certain set of pre-recorded videos and these are by the way uh, all original content video which are made available to you which are recorded by great lakes faculty and the industry faculty which we have in the classroom program 
and it is given to you plus the study material is given to you so you have to study you will be given uh, you uh, you will be released certain study content uh, on a week by week basis you will study that and on a weekend you will be coming for a uh, mentorship learning session wherein the doubts and queries related to that particular session will be clarified to you in the classroom session what happens you learn something and then you go and practice here you are practicing and learning on your own and then coming and uh, learning in the classroom session so that's how a typical online session actually works in terms of uh, talking if i talk about the curriculum uh, and the learning outcomes but yes as i said uh, the learning outcomes remains the same if you are applying yourself if you are putting around 10 to 12 hours every week in both the programs you should be able to uh, get the same learning outcome from both the programs it's just that a uh, few professionals value the classroom setup uh, where you can see and talk to the faculty and talk to your classmates uh, get an exposure to different different aspects industry sessions and other aspects related to that which i which is not available in the um, in the online session Uh, Avinash, yes, you can get in advance, you can get all the class schedule uh, for Pune. Uh, that is something which you can definitely reach out to the admissions team. They'll be happy to share with you the entire 12 months schedule with you. Uh, Manika has asked that what about the placements uh, after this particular program? So I just, uh, Manika, uh, I have uh, shared the details regarding the placements. We have a dedicated career services team which reaches out to different companies. Many companies, they know uh, that what kind of program we have. So they share job opportunities with us and we in turn share it with our candidates. So uh, you can apply for those opportunities plus networking which happens plus opportunities which you want to create for yourself. Uh, which are available uh, all across what we have seen is that around 70 percent of the candidates have been able to transition uh, from what they were doing into a different role in the analytics part and uh, we have seen around 47 to 49 percent uh, average hike in the salary of the candidates who have been able to do that so that is something which is uh, definitely uh, uh, you can go ahead and explore uh, Akash has asked if a BCom person can join. Yes, Akash, a BCom person can very well join. As I said, there is no technical requirement for you to be a BE or a BTEC uh, in this program. And as you can see on your screen also, you will find that around 15 to 20% of the candidates actually come from BCom, BBA, that kind of a background. Uh, you should have a knack for numbers, statistics. And if you have that, if you want to uh, get into actively into the analytics domain, yes, you can go ahead and do that. And companies do not generally do not put such criteria that okay you you need to be a uh, engineering background uh, candidate only then only we will evaluate you or we will take you. It all depends upon how well or good or bad you are performing in the interview process at the end of the day. Uh, Varun, I have already answered the question. What is the average percentage of candidates getting placed through GL and uh, the career part after uh, your years of experience? That is something which I have already covered. Uh, again, Pawan, I have covered the question that what is the percentage of opportunity by Great Lakes? Uh, as I said, 70% of people have been able to transition uh, job opportunities around uh, 40 to 50 or around 60 job opportunities. We uh, try and share every month uh, and this starts from uh, once you have done like around four or five months of the program when you would have learned enough we start sharing 40 50 opportunities with you almost every month uh, that is something which is there uh, bhargav has asked that i am working in the bi analyst for e commerce company how will the program and certification help in enhancing my career so bhargav uh, one thing uh, see uh, a pro proper education uh, or a, a qualification i would say goes a long way especially in india in determining uh, how uh, how much you succeed uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the opportunities which you get in terms of the uh, requirement of analytics within your area i don't think so i need to explain you that part uh, e-commerce is very much driven on the basis of uh, the uh, the analytics uh, which is actually driving the e-commerce industry right now uh, and in terms of the certification uh, what you will learn here is not only how to apply uh, or various tools and techniques how to learn on those tools and techniques but also 
uh, how to make sense of the data or the analysis which you have done that is something which is a very very important part most of the times people feel that analytics is just to know how to work on tool no it is not just to work on tool after you have uh, uh, did some analysis on the data what is the outcome you have generated how do you present that data how to make sense out of that data so that you can meet the business requirement all those things actually go uh, uh, into this program and that is something which is going to help you in, uh, in moving more towards uh, the more of a business plus analytics side rather than just being in the technical side Uh, Mahima has asked that uh, I have shown that pharma and healthcare has very less percentage. So what is the scope? Well, uh, Mahima, pharma and healthcare uh, percentage is less. But if you compare it to what it was a year back, it is uh, a big jump. And that is precisely because of the fact that more and more professionals are now uh, opening up to the possibilities of what analytics can present to them. And that is where we are seeing uh, less of IT professionals coming in and more professionals coming from different different industries because analytics is just not about uh, uh, doing just number crunching and doing working on the tools right uh, as a sales professional or as a marketing professional or as a pharma uh, healthcare person within your area how to improve the efficiency of the product how to uh, improve the sales how to improve the marketing uh, outcomes how to improve uh, the healthcare services all the things are actually now being driven on the basis of the data businesses are actually not taking decision on the basis of anything else except data the percentage is less yes because uh, not many people uh, actually have got that kind of an exposure in india to the analytics uh, part especially in the healthcare domain but as i said over the last couple of years we have seen the increase in the number of uh, people who are coming from this in, uh, particular group and that is something uh, which is again increasing furthermore and that's why you are you will see that uh, many professionals who are joining the program actually are going and doing a capstone project in the healthcare domain because they within their company if they are working for a consulting company like a deloitte or a kpmg or a uh, or say example genpact or something like that uh, they are working for healthcare clients and that is where they are using analytics so many aspects are actually available uh, if you talk about the possibilities which are there Uh, Amit has asked that uh, he is having uh, 13 years of experience. He is an entrepreneur. He needs to scale up his skill and uh, explore new opportunities. We, he works in uh, electronics automation domain. Uh, well, Amit, uh, to be very honest, uh, if you would have seen our capstone project and if, uh, we, we have many uh, projects where people have done projects on the basis of what pro uh, what work which they are doing currently work work uh, work which they are doing currently means uh, they are doing their own work uh, so uh, you will definitely not be the first case if you are joining this program there have been many entrepreneurs who have actually joined this program they have tried to improve their businesses uh, on all the fronts uh, if they are uh, if their pro uh, businesses like sales heavy uh, they have worked very actively on improving the sales process and predicting the pipeline uh, in a much better and robust manner that and uh, making a much more stable projection of how their business will behave after six months or one year and if you talk about supply chain or the operations part in fact supply chain is very a very very big user of the analytics um, at this point of time and uh, that is something which is very evident with the the kind of analytics which is being used in the optimization techniques and the other aspects related to that so depending upon which area you are looking forward to uh, first of all which area you are working in uh, or where your business is in uh, definitely i can answer on the basis of that maybe we can have a separate discussion but yes uh, we have seen entrepreneurs like you who have come into the program they have used it uh, they have a family business they have used analytics and they have gone back and tried to uh, improve their current business scenarios many people in fact uh, if one i remember i don't remember the name in fact i had a discussion where that person's uh, person actually came to do this analytics program because his father's business was not running well and he wanted to learn analytics and go back and implement and he has done fairly well uh, just by improving certain aspects of the pro, uh, business uh, by uh, working with the help of the data which is being generated in his uh, in his business at this point of time so uh, what 
i can see is uh, there are lot many questions right now i can see there are another 25 to 30 questions which i have and a couple of questions i have not been able to even touch till now uh, uh, it will be very difficult for me to actually answer all of them in such a short span of time uh, we have already overshot the time by around uh, 20 minutes or so uh, what I would uh, definitely do is that uh, if you all are fine with this, for people whom I have not been able to answer, uh, by tomorrow we will reach out to all of you and exclusively answer the questions which you have asked from us. Uh, if you want to talk to me, I'll be more than happy to actually interact with you and uh, uh, go ahead and uh, discuss one-on-one -on -one in terms of your profile as well as what you want to uh, do in the analytics domain but it will be very difficult for me to actually take up all the questions and at this point of time because uh, as i said i can see uh, around 20 21 odd questions which are there in front of me which i have not been able to answer so i would uh, sincerely apologize that i am not able to uh, continue further ahead because i'll have to respect the time uh, at this point of time but what i can promise you is that by tomorrow for sure uh, the admissions team will definitely reach out to all of you for whom I have not been able to answer the question and they will be answering all of, uh, of your question. If in case you want to talk to me, please do let me know. You can drop me a mail on ravi at greatlearning.in. Uh, I'll be happy to uh, have a one on one conversation, uh, especially on the questions which you have. Uh, so please feel free to do that. But my apologies again. Uh, uh, and uh, as I said, the admissions team will definitely reach out to you guys by tomorrow. Uh, yes, Krunal, I will definitely give you a call on the number which you have uh, sent. I will definitely do that. So thanks a lot, uh, everyone, for joining us today. You have taken out time. You have stayed for so long. Again, I'm saying if I've not been able to answer, I'm sincerely apologizing for that. But we will definitely reach out to all of you by tomorrow to answer all the questions which you have. So thanks a lot and uh, have a uh, have a great day. Thank you.